All right, tell me, have you ever been there? You filmed some B-roll, you got a little footage there that you want to make in the slow motion, you get it back in your computer and you're like, oh no, I filmed it at the wrong frame rate, right? Usually we want to film at a frame rate, something like 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second. If you want some good buttery slow-mo there, even 240 maybe if you got that on your camera. But let's say, oops, you forgot to change it and your footage is filmed in 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and you edit in a 24 frame per second timeline. How do we get that slow motion to look good? Because it would look something like this. See how jittery it is? It's skipping frames. It just doesn't look good if we try and slow it down. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the settings you can use in DaVinci Resolve to actually be able to use that footage in slow motion and have it look pretty good. I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna show you with a 24 frame per second clip, a 30 frame per second clip, as well as a 60 frame per second clip, and just show you how that looks when we edit together and make it slow motion. And the settings we can change in Resolve that are gonna make it look even better. Today's video is sponsored by The Ridge. We'll talk more about them a little bit later, but they do have this really cool keychain you might want to check out. Looks a little something like this, but we'll get into that later. All right, let's jump into Resolve, and we're going to talk about how to make this B-roll and slow motion look smoother and better, in case you actually messed up when you filmed it. Let's check it out. So we're going to start with the worst case scenario first, and that is you filmed in 23.976 frames per second or 24, and you're dumping it into the same frame rate timeline, which is fine if you're doing talking head like this, but you want to do slow-mo. So here's what it looks like if we have that frame rate clip in our timeline. So here it is before I slow it down. All right. Yeah, it looks fine. No problem. Okay. So I'm going to select my clip. I'm going to use the retime controls using command or control R. I'm going to change the speed of it by clicking the little drop down and we're going to go 50%. So now if I play through it when it's at 50% here, look at that. It don't look good. Come on. Let's be honest. That looks like garbage. You would never use that. But let's say you can't get back out to the field. You're not able to refilm it with the right frame rate, something like 60, 120, whatever it might be. Here's how we can fix it in Resolve. So we're going to select our clip right here. You want to come to your inspector right here. Make sure you got the inspector open. And then we're going to scroll down and we have retime and scaling right here. So we've got different options here. And the two that we want to look at today are retime process and motion estimation. So if we click the drop down for retime process, we have nearest frame blend and optical flow. If you want to know what each one of these means specifically, let me know. I'll make a video about that. But all you need to know is that basically nearest does an okay job and optical flow is going to do the best. Frame blend is going to be somewhere in the middle. Now, optical flow is the one that I generally pick whenever I have any kind of motion in my clip, especially with slow motion clips that I want it to just look a little bit smoother and look a little bit better. But do know that it is going to make your machine run a little bit slower. Now, optical flow for me, I'm on an M1 Mac mini with 16 gigs of RAM. It doesn't really slow things down too much, so it's okay for me. But if your machine is the specs on there, a little, eh, it might slow down your machine for sure. So I'm going to choose optical flow. Now we can take a quick look and just see what optical flow did to our clip. And you see, it looks all wacky there. So one of the things I did do was stabilize it. So I'm actually going to reset my stabilization because if you stabilize a clip before you apply these two settings, then it's going to flicker like that. It, you need to rerun the stabilization. So you might as well just wait till after to run your stabilization. That's a little bonus tip there. But anyway, got rid of that stabilization. Let's see what it looks like with just the optical flow settings. All right. I mean, that's not so bad. It's a lot better than it was, right? Here, I have a same clip, the original right here. Look at how jittery that is, right? That doesn't work good. I'm not liking that. So the next thing we can do is come back to our inspector and come to motion estimation right here. Now, by default, I think it's set on standard faster, and that can work out fine. But the same concept applies here, where standard faster is like your you know, least amount of processing or your least good option here all the way down to speed warp and speed warp does an awesome job, but it's going to be super hard on your machine. And I wouldn't recommend using it on a ton of clips. I would just use it on, you know, clips that really need it. For example, the clip we're looking at right now at, at 24 frames per second, I slowed it down. So really we're only getting 12 frames per second. What about all those other frames that we're kind of missing there in our 24 frame per second timeline, right? So this is a case where speed warp could do a great job. So if I turn it on there, it's going to go ahead and process on that clip. And you see, I do have our render cache set to cache in the background. Got our little red bar up here and it's going to take a while. It's probably going to take uh, two or three minutes to render this clip, which is only how many seconds is this? this is a seven second clip. So it's going to take a little bit when you use speed warp because it's a lot on your machine to 
have it process and do the things that it needs to do. And it does a fantastic job and actually makes this clip pretty usable, even though we only shot it in 24 frames per second. So it does take a little bit for the speed warp to work here, but we've got it halfway done. So I'm gonna play this for you. Take a look at this. When we look at, look at how smooth that is, right? Because what it's doing is adding in frames and essentially creating what's not there and interpolating stuff between frames because that clip technically only has 12 frames per second when we've slowed it down by 50%. So using speed warp actually makes that clip pretty usable and it's not jittery. And again, just to show you, here's what it looked like without the speed warp on there and without the optical flow. Huge difference and can really, really make some footage usable in case you can't get back out to reshoot it. Ideally, best case scenario, you go out reshoot it, but this could definitely work if you're in a pinch and you need to use some footage, you're slowing it down and you filmed it at the wrong frame rate. Now you can do this on a clip by clip basis, but there is a way to do it to your entire project at the end. I'll show you that in a little bit here, but let me just show you also how this can work on a 30 frame and a 60 frame per second, just to help smooth things out and make it look even better. So looking in Resolve here, I've got a clip that is 30 frames per second. Here's the original, right? That's at 30 frames per second. Now we're in a 24 frame per second timeline. So it looks a little choppy, right? Because the frame rates aren't the same. So let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit. I'm gonna use Commander Control R and I'm gonna slow it down to, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say 60%. I'm just gonna go with 60%. Now, if I play it back, all right, you can see it's it, it's a little slow. It's a little uh, choppy there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my clip, come back to my inspector up here. I'm gonna make sure I reset my stabilization so we don't have to worry about that right now. You wanna apply that at the end because it can make thing, weird things happen like that flicker we saw earlier. Come down to retime and scaling. I'm gonna change my retime process to optical flow. I'm gonna change my motion estimation to, I'm gonna go enhanced better because I don't think it needs the speed warp. So we're gonna try enhance better and see how that looks. I'm gonna let it render up and then we're gonna play through it. All right, and rendered up, here's what that clip looks like. It looks pretty good. It's pretty smooth. I'm happy with that, totally usable. We don't have the shakes. Now I would use stabilization on it after I've changed these two settings for the retiming and scaling. And that's gonna just help smooth it out a little bit more for you. And again, remember, here's what the original looked like, a little bit choppy. So I think it did a good job. Makes that clip totally usable, in my opinion. Now let's say I did film in 60 frames per second and this next clip is in 60 frames per second and I slow it down half the speed, right? So we're at 30 frames per second for this particular clip now, but we're in a 24 frame per second timeline. So let's go ahead and apply these settings here and see how well it does on this particular clip and see how it makes it look. So I have my clip, again, we're at 50% right here. I'm gonna come to my inspector up here, retime and scaling. Now I could go with just optical flow in this case and see how that works out. So maybe we'll try that. We're gonna run the optical flow. It's uh, rendering up here, let's play through. So it does look pretty good with just the optical flow, but let's say I want it to look even better and get rid of those little bit of jitters that we see. Again, I'm gonna select my clip. We're gonna come to motion estimation. And this time I'm gonna try enhanced faster and see how that looks. And now you see, I do have some weird things happening here. Now, if you see something like that, just come back up here to your stabilization. And for some reason, I find that I keep having to reset it. I don't know if this is a beta thing. I'm in Resolve 18 beta six or whatever's out now. So if you reset that and then you let it just rebuild the, the uh, little render cache here, then it's fine. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. But once the stabilization is reset, check it out. Here's what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Again, you could try enhanced better or speed warp if you want, but that looks pretty good. Now I would probably stabilize it too because I was handheld, it's a little shaky, but, but you get the idea here on what the retime and scaling controls can do for you. I do have one more tip on how you can adjust all your clips at once instead of going clip by clip. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video and that is The Ridge. The Ridge has this cool little key case thing and it carries your keys in it. If you were looking to kind of lighten the load in your pockets, this might be something that you're interested in. It's easy to use. You can just unscrew the little bolt here. You pop in your keys, put the bolt back in, and then you got this nice little keychain here that you could just pop in your pocket. It's small, it's thin, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So the Ridge just has a ton of cool products here. I really love their line of stuff that they've got. It's cool, it's practical. It lightens the load in your pockets, which I really like. If you're interested in checking out this little key case right here, check out the link in the description below. That'll shoot you over to their website. You can check out all the cool things that they got over there. They even have little cool things like this guy right here, this cool Ridge pen. This thing is pretty sweet. It's nice, it's heavy for a pen. This thing is awesome. So hit that link up in the description below. You wanna check that out. A big thank you to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. 
And now let's get back to that tip in Resolve where you can set this setting for all your clips and not just individual clips. Check it out. So when I'm in Resolve here and I want to apply this to everything, what we can do is go to our project settings. So click on the little gear icon down at the bottom here. That's going to bring up your project settings. Now under master settings right here, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom and we have frame interpolation. So these settings we see right here, retime process and motion estimation mode are the same tools that we were working with in the inspector. Now this is what the default settings are. So default is nearest, right? Which is the least intensive processing for your machine. And then the motion estimation is set to standard faster. So those are the defaults and that's what we're making changes to in the inspector. Now let's say I have a bunch of B-roll and I want to use optical flow for all the B-roll because it just makes it look better. Well, I can just change it right here in my master settings for my project settings. I can click on nearest, come down to optical flow. Now all of my clips in my timeline are going to have optical flow applied to them versus using the nearest setting, which is right here at the top. And remember what I said, nearest is like the least, uh, you know, in intense and least uh, good, I guess you could say. And optical flow is the best. So you can pick what you want to use and same for motion estimation. But one thing you notice is when I click on the drop down there, you don't have speed warp as an option because speed warp is too intense on pretty much any computer. You wouldn't want to use that on all your clips. You just want to use that where you really need it. So you can bump up the quality in these a little bit. Generally, I leave it on standard faster and I'll just change it on a clip by clip basis. If I'm, you know, working with some, some cool B roll or something like that, where I'm slowing down clips and I just need it to be a little bit smoother. So I leave it on standard faster just so I can edit better and not run into little hiccups and have my machine bogged down on me. So when you got the settings you want, hit save and you're good to go. You're going to get some smoother slow motion while you're working here in your timeline. A big thank you to the bridge for sponsoring today's video. You want to know more about slow-mo? Got a video over here. Check that out. It's like a little crash course in slow-mo. With that said, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.